So I just got some, um, I, I think, bad news um, about there is a MLK movie coming out, right? A biopic where, like, everybody should be excited to hear about an MLK biopic. And I'm like, okay, now who's producing it? Who's directing it, right? Who's writing for it? So I looked online and uh, Variety.com says Chris Rock, right? Uh, to direct Martin Luther King Jr. And I'm like, okay, so I'm looking like, okay, there's there's got to be some type of catch to this, right? Because at the end of the day, I am happy that there is a Black American involved in a Black American project, right? I'm totally fine with that. Chris Rock, I'm, I'm trying to understand why, why it would be Chris Rock, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter as long as we have representation uh, of our own covering our stories, right? We, we should be able to cover our stories, right? So then I look at it, I read, I said, Chris Rock to direct Martin Luther King Jr. biopic. Then I see Steven Spielberg to executive produce. And that's where my issue is. We should be able to uh, direct and we should be able to executive produce our own stories. Right. Our own stories. I am sure there have been black people that have wrote on the life of King. Right. Um, I just don't understand why when we have our own stories, we have everybody doing it but us. I just don't think that's fair because if are we able to do that with other people's stories? Are we able to do that? Are we able to have that involvement? Are we able to run the show with somebody else's story? Somebody else's um, culture? No, we're not. So why are people able to do that with us? So I'm reading this and it says Chris Rock and Steven Spielberg are collaborating. It's not a collaboration. On a movie about the life of Martin Luther King. Rock is in talks to direct and produce the project with Spielberg on board as the executive. That's what you guys have to understand. Executive producer. Produce. He's going to produce this film on a black American's life. And it's not even coming from a black American. Universal Pictures is backing the biographical drama after optioning Jonathan Egg's uh, biography, King of Life. And I don't even think he's black. So this biography, um, you know, is going on and they are allowed to be the ones to make this biopic. And I don't I don't agree with it. Now, looking at Chris Rock resume, he's made top five, head of state. I think I love my wife, right? Um, he'll be seen in director of George C. Wolf's Rustin, uh, starring um, Coleman Domingo, who's not a black American. Um, so I just like you just see a lot of uh, these 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 movies like Selma. I didn't know this, but. Apparently, the reason why Selma was not able to use uh, King's uh, speeches in their in their uh, movie is because Spielberg has the movie rights to all MLK speeches. How is that correct? How is that fair? How is that equity? How is that um, you know right for us as a people? For somebody that is not black and not a black American, have rights the movie rights to the speeches of MLK. I don't know. Like, I, I just find that, I find that interesting. And the family gave it to him. The family gave it to him. I just don't get it, folks. Like, I have a problem myself with that Selma was played by an actor that is not even black American. You don't you think somebody that's black American would have a, a better connection to having you know, acting those sermons, coming up with those type of churches, having that state of mind, dealing with uh, having relatives that have went through that, the civil rights, and 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 it was around during that time. So yeah, Spielberg owns the film rights to Martin Luther King's speeches. Wow. So, um, 
in the Washington Post posted that 2015, Steven Spielberg still has the life rights to Martin Luther King's story. And I think that's a problem. I think that's a, a problem and I think we should have access to our own stories. But if you guys don't talk about it, I won't be watching the movie. Um, I won't support it um, at, at all. I'll look up his speeches on my own. I'll, I'll look up documentaries on my, on my own, but I won't support it. I won't support anything that is talking about our heroes, our icons, unless it is created by our own people. That's the only way I will start doing that. So um, I just want you guys to understand. I mean, you think about Spielberg. Spielberg, you know, had a connection with the Color Purple movie. And the Color Purple movie did not bring black men and black women together. It was a divisive film. And he was a part of that movie. So the same Spielberg is going to be a part of... He's going to be a part of um, this movie that was um, the, the, the biopic of MLK. Just think about it. Spielberg was a part of this movie, uh, Color Purple, which made over $98 million. But the cost of what it did to black folks is, is I mean, there's not even a figure for it, right? Um, he directed this movie. The movie was about basically there was no good black man in that entire movie. Um, you know, it was black women in the movie. Um, and it was, um, if you looked at it and watched it, um, it, it painted black men as being, um, you know, abusive, uh, in every way. Um, it painted them as being, uh, disrespectful to black women. It painted them as just being in juke joints, getting drunk, right? Watching women strip. But it did not show what got those black men and black women in those conditions. It didn't talk about um, the systemic uh, racism that led them into that. Right. And the, and the woman that actually wrote the book, she wanted to totally not even focus on that element of racism. Right. And discrimination and prejudice and Jim Crow and all those elements. Right. They just wanted to make it seem like the black man uh, was the toxic villain. And who was a part of that story? Um, it was Steven um, Spielberg. So, I mean, that's like I said, that was his coming of age. When he did that film, that took his career to the next level. Don't matter what it did to the actual, um, you know, our people. Don't matter about that. So I won't support anything that he does. And I don't think you guys understood. In 1986, there was a debate over the color purple. There was a debate. Um, and a lot of people back in the day weren't, weren't cool with it. They were like, come on. like, And they allowed Spielberg to, 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 to be a part of that. And Oprah, too. Oprah is somebody I want to start talking about. How Oprah... When she when she was on her show, she and, and I think um, man, I forgot uh, the gentleman's name, but he is a he was a director in a lot of black movies. But he said a great point. He says that Oprah played colorless on her talk show. Right? She she didn't want to have any involvement with anything of her being acknowledged by right, for her color of her skin. But all the movies that she is involved in, she takes her makeup off. She uh, tries to look in the worst way possible. Right. And she'll she'll play that role. But when she was on her talk show, it was it was like night and day. Um, and, and I think that's just terrible. Like this, look, the Oprah said this back in the day and you guys, the New York Times article is still available. It came out in 1986. Oprah Winfrey, host of the television show, who got backlash for this movie in Chicago, who plays Sophia, Celie's stepdaughter in law. Um, so this movie is not trying to represent the history of black people in this country any more than the Godfather was trying to represent the history of Italian Americans. In this case, it's one woman's story. So it's one woman's story, right? 
But in this one woman's story, the impact that it had on a population of black Americans um, was devastating. One woman's story, right? So if it was just one woman's story, why then there weren't there multiple stories in there that had someone show a different perspective of their interaction with the black man and also got to the root of how that black man got into that condition? Nope. We want to talk about how filthy the black man is. So I, I think that was the start of putting black men against black women. Um, and the movie did a great job of doing that. And they try to re and remaking the movie again uh, because they I don't think they thought it it separated enough of us as black people against each other. So they got to make another one coming out. And uh, there's a gentleman read this article, New York Times, uh, Willis Edward, a president of the Beverly Hills chapter of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, argue in an interview that the movie never showed the good about black men. See? Then others, um, others said, according to this article, others argue that the movie distorts black history and appears to blame the victims of racism for a host of social problems, including a preponderance of broken families and a high incidence uh, of teenage preg pregnancy. Lerone Bennett, a historian who is senior editor of Ebony Magazine, said, speaking of Mr. Spielberg, he doesn't show us the strong black woman who nursed the sick and cared for the orphans and organized clubs and in general exercised a leadership role denied um, by white women in society. What Steven Spielberg doesn't show us, in short, is the color black. So check this article out when you get a chance. Um, they, it made a ton of movie, a ton of money on the movie. And it says as debate continued, the movie had gross nearly twenty nine million dollars through J January 19, drawing audiences that are 72 percent white. And the book, the fastest selling paperback in a long time, a book that brought us, put us against each other, made Black, white people want to watch this movie. That's why so many white people love the Color Purple movie because they feel no guilt, right? They have not an uneasy movie as a watch to see somebody else harm each other and see other, other folks have other issues, but they can hide their hands in the situation of these filmmakers and not address the real problem. Peace.